energy is the form. Now you can have two kinds of maya. Maha maya, which is material energy, material illusion. Or you can have yoga maya, which is spiritual energy, spiritual illusion. The difference is the maha maya is temporary, but the yoga maya is eternal. It never changes. It never, it's never born and never dies. never created never destroy. So why do we call it Maya? Huh? Well, it's very simple. Because in the Yoga Maya, Krishna plays a role. He manifests a form for pastimes with his devotees. And he acts as, not as the supreme controller, the supreme personality of Godhead, but he acts as our dear most friend. Huh? Our friend or our master our son, or even as our lover. See, so this is a kind of maya, it's a kind of illusion. Because we actually know that Krishna is vast. Krishna is unlimited. Krishna is all-powerful and all-knowing. But when we come face to face with that aspect of Krishna, we become overwhelmed. Please be careful of that table. It's very, very shaky. Don't knock the computer. Yeah, maybe you should sit over here. That, sit over here. that way you can wiggle around and not break anything. Unless the tripod. <laughs> okay, so that was close. Yeah. So when Arjuna saw Krishna's universal form in Bhagavad Gita. He says, Oh Lord, please show me this form of yours, which is very rare. Hardly anyone has ever seen this form. Arjuna manifests, I'm sorry, Krishna manifests his universal form. It's vast. It's glowing like millions of suns, filling the whole sky. Thousands and thousands and millions of forms, all great, gigantic, powerful. And what does Arjuna say? Oh, this is too much. <laughs> mm. Please manifest your forearm form <laughs> and your two-arm form. Mm. That's very pleasing. See? It's very pleasing because those forms are on a human scale. Those forms are within human perception. Right? They're uh, on our ability, our level to serve. With the universal form, what can we do? We can just stand there in awe, like, you know. There, there's no, you can't have a relationship with the infinite God of everything. It's too much. But when, when Krishna acts as our friend or our lover or our, our father or, or, we, or he can become our son, even, you know, then we can have a relationship on our level. So Krishna actually he does this. He hides his true nature, which can only really be known by himself. And he manifests a form that we can understand in order to have a relationship with us. Nityo na nityana chaitana chaitana eko bahuna yogitatikama. There's so many conscious beings and there's so many eternal beings. But there's only one supreme conscious eternal being. And the difference between him and us is that he is maintaining all the others. He's giving all their desires. Yo vidit hati kama. Whatever they want, he's giving. Right? So Krishna, the name Krishna, means the source of all desires, the source of all enjoyment. Everything that's good, everything that's enjoyable, everything that's nice is coming from him. So he is the... Uh, the ocean of all pleasure, enjoyment, everything that's good, everything that's wonderful, is there. Now. Uh, it has to have a source. It has to have a reservoir somewhere. Uh, just like we have water. So this is a small amount of water. But we know that somewhere there's an ocean. It's unlimited water. Uh, and the, the sunlight is coming in. 
and you see a little bit of light here. I uh, can't see the sun directly from here. But we know that there's a reservoir of light, like an ocean. The sun is full of light. So similarly, when we experience ourself as conscious living entities, Brahma, uh, Aham Brahma, Snake, I'm a conscious living entity. That's what I do. I'm conscious. <laughs> We know there must be somewhere an ocean of this consciousness. There must be a reservoir of this consciousness, a source of this energy, just like all the other energies that we see in the world. Like all these things, very nice things. Uh, they manifest from the earth. So if we, if we see some nice things made of the earth, then we know there has to be an unlimited source of this earth with all different varieties of earthy energy that can be made into various products. Like that. By the way, I'm in Connecticut now. <laughs> I'm at Devesha's house. And we're having a little class. Uh, you can do this in your house too. You know, it's very easy. You just chant a little mantra, a little Hare Krishna, with your family members. Teach them the mantras and like that. And then you have a very nice atmosphere in the home. All the Devesha's kids are really nice. They know all the mantras, all the prayers. They know how to worship the deity and offer prasadam and everything like that. But this knowledge will benefit them the rest of their lives. Because when we please Krishna, then guess what happens? Krishna pleases us. Like, I'm so happy. You know, I'm sitting here. And, and I'm fighting not to burst out into tears because I'm so happy. But why am I so happy? Because we just chanted Hare Krishna a little bit, and because our whole lives are dedicated to serving Him, giving Him what tiny amount of pleasure, what tiny amount of service that we can generate. Uh, so Krishna, He reciprocates. He is, uh, he's not selfish, he's not jealous, he's not afraid, there's nothing to fear, nothing, no, nothing can change his position, he is always supreme. Huh? So guess what he did, what he does? His business is simply to have nice loving exchanges with his devotees. That's why Krishna is called Rasaraj. Rasaraj means he's the, the king of enjoyers. <laughs> king of rasa. Rasa means enjoyment. Relishing different tastes. So what do we do when we enjoy it? Huh? Like we have a nice meal. Today is Ikadashi, but no matter. We still had a wonderful prasada today. And how is that? Why are we enjoying this food? Because it has such a wonderful taste. Spices, and it's nicely prepared and cooked, and nicely served, and so we, we relish the taste of the food, we relish the presentation, the, the care, the love, and most of all, the bhakti, this, this transcendental service that went into its preparation. And because of that, now we feel satisfied. Oh, I've eaten this nice meal, now I'm satisfied. So similarly, when we serve Krishna, we're also relishing the taste. Everyone is trying to relish different tastes of relationship in life. Huh? Like we have a relationship with our wife or husband. We have a relationship with our kids. We have a relationship with our friends, with other people. Huh? Maybe we have business relationships or we have uh, teaching or learning relationships or maybe we have some uh, political relationships or organizational relationships or community relationships. And all these relationships exist, but we partake in all of them because we relish some taste from them. They're not dry, they're not useless. Huh? They give us some pleasure, they give us some enjoyment. And we need this enjoyment to relish those relationships. I think you have to touch the, the track every once in a while or it's going to go into screensaver mode and then you're going to have to Unlock it. Let me just. Yeah, just touch it every few minutes to, to keep it from. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's the first time we've ever done this, so. 
<laughs> we were lucky to get ready in time. Um, everybody's trying to relish different tastes in their relationship. So these tastes in the material world are very limited and temporary. Uh, we all know relationships, especially intimate relationships, are full of so many problems. There's people, couples are coming together and then breaking up. Uh, friends, you have friends and then for some time you stay friendly and then uh, they break up and they go their separate ways. You know. The relationship changes and everything uh, goes through the typical stages of material existence. Uh, comes into being at a certain time, exists for a while, and then it goes away. So these are material relationships. But the relationships that we have with Krishna, on the other hand, are perfect. 